Inner Odyssey or the Journey of My Soul by Carl Pemberton. Pemberton, Pemberton, where do I know that name from? Dedicated to myself, the only person who ever understood me. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter one, ever since I had a spiritual experience on the upper deck of the number 57 bus whilst returning from a trip to the post office savings bank, I have decided to keep this diary of my inner being. <laughs> Not simply for myself, but to serve as a guide to others. <coughs> it is Mr. Pemberton. I thought the name was familiar. Do I know you? Wait. Are you, might you be that woman from the library? I might. <laughs> You look different. <laughs> it's my day off. <laughs> what a coincidence, eh? You can come here often, Mr. Pemberton? No. Put that back where you found it, please. This? If you would. I didn't know you were a writer, Mr. Pemberton. And you? Not me. I'm just a humble librarian. No, I mean, <laughs> do you come often here, to this place? Not often, no. Sometimes. On my day off, I, I like to go hiking. Hiking? <laughs> uh, speaking of which, let's get back to the others. Others? Oh, by the way, I, I'd appreciate it if you didn't mention running into me. Mention it to whom? My colleagues at the library. I prefer to keep a rigid separation between my working life and my leisure activities. I never speak to any of you beyond the bare necessities. I suppose that's true. I guess you're very discreet. I needn't have asked. From here on, I'll be as silent as the grave. <laughs> you can depend on it. <laughs> Miss, or is it Mrs.? Mm, it's Ms. Miss what? Bracken. Bracken, that's a nice name. Reminds me of Scotland. <laughs> What's your first name? <clears throat> Heather? <laughs> 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 well, I, I better I better get going. It was nice running into you, Mr. Comfort. Oh, by the way, if a certain someone should come looking for me from the, the hiking group, I mean, <laughs> tell him I was here and gone. Tell him I'll be waiting at the crossroads. Tell him to bloody well hurry up because it looks like rain. <laughs> Of all people, of all days, she didn't even notice. Come on, Pemberton. Bad choice, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I know those beams. They're as rotten as last week's bananas. Never support a fully grown man. I'd go outside if I were you. Lots of solid old trees. Probably seen more sooty sides than you've had hot dinners. Who are you? Mind you, it's raining a bit. But what of it? You come into this world wet and slippery. Hmm. You might as, go out, go out, might as well go out the same way. Ooh, what have we here? Leave it! What are you doing here? No, Squire. What are you doing here? Apart from the obvious. Isn't the obvious enough for you? No, Squire, it's not. Not by a long chalk. Suppose those beams did the trick, which they won't, but just suppose. You're hanging there dead, then what? Then nothing. I don't believe in an afterlife. <laughs> Typical. I'm not talking about your afterlife, mate. I'm talking about the afterlife for the poor bugger that finds you. What about them? Lots of people come this way. Ramblers, boy scouts, girl guides. I don't know when it's... Selfish at a time like this, I wasn't thinking. Girl guides, Christ! Do you know where all the blood goes when a bloke hangs himself? <laughs> Just imagine <laughs> a group of girl guides coming in here for a nice picnic, whistling the happy wanderer. And you're hanging from the ceiling, Homo erectus in all his glory. <laughs> <laughs> that is most unlikely. <laughs> it's bloody guaranteed, mate. It's a fact well attested by medical science. No, I mean the whole bloody scenario. <laughs> Look, whoever you are, you're interfering in something that doesn't concern you. Wait, are you looking for a woman by any chance? 
<laughs> That's a very personal question, Squire. <laughs> no, I mean... We've only just met and you're making inquiries about my libido. <laughs> <laughs> no, there was a woman here earlier. I had the impression she was waiting for someone. So why didn't she wait? I disturbed her, I think. That I understand. <laughs> she said she'd wait at the crossroads. Wait for who? Whom? For whom? <laughs> I'm sorry, it's a reflex. I've been a teacher of grammar for a number of years. Keep to the point, Squire. This woman, what did she look like? She looked like a tart. <laughs> like a train in the middle of nowhere. Most unusual. But she's not a tart. She's a librarian. <clears throat> That's what she said. Never believe a tart, mate. They lie like they breathe. No, I recognized her. We recognized each other from the library. At the crossroads, you say? Yes, she had some story about being part of a group of hikers, but it, it didn't hang together. Hey, <laughs> um, what did I just tell you about tarts? <laughs> well, I suppose, I don't know these days, perhaps a librarian's salary needs a little supplementing. <laughs> perhaps she does it because she likes it. There's a whore inside every woman. It's just a matter of knowing how to bring it out. <laughs> At the crossroads, you say? I shall go and investigate. Those beams look all right to me. <laughs> 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 I'm a wanderer indeed. Still here, Mr. Pemberton. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> I can see that, Miss Bracken. Ms. Or is it perhaps Spanish Jackie or Pauline from Pigalle? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm not following you, Mr. Pemberton. Never mind. I thought you were going to the crossroads. <clears throat> I couldn't stay out in that weather, Mr. Pemberton. It's one of those pernicious drizzles. You think it's nothing, and then suddenly you're soaked to the bone. Mr. Pemberton? Yes, Miss Bracken. What exactly are you doing here? Trying to do, Miss Bracken. <laughs> Trying to do. With great difficulty. <laughs> isn't, it tad, isn't it a tad obvious? <laughs> I didn't notice before. I, I guess I can be a bit self-absorbed, I'm afraid. Don't apologize. Being self-absorbed is part of the human condition. Why? How should I know? Ask God. Oh, well, 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 he says you look like a tart. You don't look like a tart to me. <laughs> you haven't seen me without this. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> well, I thought you were at the crossroads. <laughs> Ready to stop play, Squire. I couldn't see an inch in front of my face. Don't change the subject. The lady asked a question. Answer it. No need, Mr. Pemberton. A gesture such as yours is prepared in the silence of the heart. Like a great work of art. I shall respect that silence. What's she on about? I told you she was a librarian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm beginning to believe you. Miss Brackett. Yes, Mr. Pemberton. <laughs> you held the reason in your hand a little while back. As of yesterday, this had been rejected by 177 publishers. <laughs> Number 178 arrived this morning. I'm no longer a young man. My reserves of energy are exhausted. But what about your loved ones? How will they feel? There are no loved ones, just a few distant relatives who don't even know I exist. Oh dear, that is sad. <laughs> so that's a book then, is it? Putatively. <laughs> What's he mean? Reputedly or supposedly. Though journalists who should know better frequently misuse it as a synonym for potentially. <laughs> You look very fetching in leather. <laughs> I know. <laughs> this book, what's it about? Me, my life. Oh, it looks pretty thick. I expect Mr. Pemberton's had an eventful life. Got any sex in there? It's not about that, though. Naturally, there are some illusions. Well, of course there's illusions. The world would be a bleeding horrible place without illusions, wouldn't it? <laughs> I think Mr. Pemberton said illusions, as in glancing references to a subject. 
Lance in references. <laughs> Lance in references. <coughs> There's your problem right there, mate. No sex, no sales. <laughs> Perhaps I should give it to you. You can spice it up. <laughs> I'd love to, mate, but thing is, I'm heavily in demand for the foreseeable future. I've got more prior engagements than Her Majesty the Queen, if you want to know the truth. Why don't you go and take your coat right off, darling? No, not like that. Slowly, provocatively, play the sexual card. Like a tart. He said you were a tart. No, I didn't. I... Oh, it's really okay, Mr. Pemberton. <laughs> <laughs> I quite like being a tart sometimes. It's liberating. That's it. Liberate yourself, baby. What about me? <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Nobody wants you to take your clothes off, Squire. I came here to kill myself. <laughs> Who's stopping you? <laughs> In peace and dignity. There'll be nothing dignified about hanging up there, mate. Your tongue will be on your chin and your hamps will be sticking out like a poker. His Hampton? <laughs> it's rhyming slang. <laughs> rhyming slang? What does Hampton rhyme with? Hampton. I can't think of anything. It's a place name. The, the rhyme occurs in the second part. Hampton Wick. Hampton <laughs> 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 Wick. Oh, I see. Like a poker. <laughs> Is that true? Medically attested fact, darling. <sighs> Mr. Pemberton? Yes, Miss Bracken. Don't let us put you off. We won't be any trouble. <laughs> <laughs> trouble? <laughs> what have you got in mind, darling? Well, if Mr. Pemberton is dead set on this, as it were. <laughs> I am dead set on it, as you so nice to <laughs> Well, it's just that I am something of a history buff. And I did read somewhere that during the French Revolution, or more precisely, the terror, when the guillotine was in full spate, certain debauched couples would rent rooms that gave a clear view of the executions. They could see the victims being brought to the platform, bound and helpless. And then their necks laid, laid flat in the niche, waiting for the inexorable fall of the blade. Some of these spectators had things down to a fine art. They would reach their climax at the exact moment that the head oh. was severed and the blood spurt forth from the victim's neck. <laughs> <laughs> a really skillful lover could achieve this blissful state, not only for himself, but also for his partner. I knew it. She's always coming up with new ways to spice things up. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, they were French. <laughs> There's not a frog alive or dead can hold a candle to me. Ready when you are, mate. Bloody <laughs> <laughs> aphrodisiac for you. <laughs> I'm not going to be a bloody aphrodisiac for you. Besides, you said those beams wouldn't hold. I was lying. I was lying. <laughs> At that stage, I didn't know about the finer points of the French Revolution. <laughs> of course, if you did want to piss off outside and hang yourself for a tree, be my guest. We can manage without you, can't we, darling? No, you piss off. I was here first. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take that tone with me, or I'll forget you're an old man. I'm not an old man. I can take care of myself. What do you look at this geezer? I am looking. Would you really fight him, Mr. Pemberton? If I have to. Don't be ridiculous. I'd have you for an 8 o'clock breakfast. I was amateur boxing champ three years running. <laughs> heavy middleweight division. Ha! There's no such thing as a heavy middleweight. <laughs> <laughs> now he's calling me a liar. I did some boxing in the army. I know the weights. You were in the army, Mr. Pemberton? Your library card says teacher. Only since I left the services. Which services? Special services. <laughs> oh, gosh, were you some kind of commando? You could call it that. Did you see any action? 
I've been in some well-known trouble spots. <laughs> what is this? This is your life? <laughs> this must have been dangerous. It could be. <laughs> what are you so interested in him for? He hasn't got what you need. Do not presume to know what I need. <laughs> and, uh, forgive the directness of my question, Mr. Pemberton, but did you ever have occasion to kill somebody? No. <laughs> Sometimes we had to transfer people to eternity, like Jonathan has it. Transfer people to eternity. The Yanks, they terminate with extreme prejudice. Well, they would, wouldn't they? Not an ounce of poetry as usual. No wonder I left. <laughs> How did it feel, this, uh, this transferring to eternity business? <laughs> well, it depended on the method one used, Miss Bracken. If it was a gun or a bomb or a knife, it was all rather impersonal. Like using a tool to do a job. But sometimes we used our bare hands and that was different. Bare hands. It happened. A lot, Mr. Pemberton? It happened. <laughs> and how was how it different? It was intimate, Miss Bracken. Much more intimate. One felt the throbbing pulse of another's life <laughs> under one's fingers, the way one does when one is making love. Yes, Mr. Pemberton? And then one snuffed it out quickly and efficiently. <laughs> and with an exhilarating sense of power, I'm ashamed to say. Well, no need to feel ashamed. I'm sure you were only doing your duty. I don't know why. I feel a little faint. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Pemberton. It's all in here, is it? All that commando stuff? Not a word. This is a spiritual document. I've kept physical events to a minimum. Probably because none of this ever happens. Believe what you like. I don't know what came over me. Let's go, darling. <coughs> Let's ninja over here get on with topping himself. We'll find somewhere else. <laughs> it is a shame, Mr. Pemberton, that you couldn't have put in a bit more about your military experience. People do like to read about kidnappings and assassinations and all those interesting things they don't get a chance to do themselves. <laughs> I, I find plenty of that elsewhere. This is the chronicle of my soul, the journal of my inner life. You know, Mr. Pemberton, I always sensed there was something special about you. But you did? I was always aware of you when you came to the library. It must have been that combination of the spiritual and the virile. I didn't think you even, no, I didn't think you even noticed me. Oh, I did, yeah. Mr. Pemberton, I did. And I you. Really? Yes. You don't even look at me. You just stare at your hands whenever you bring your books to the counter. Look, there, you're doing it again. <laughs> Shyness, Miss Brown. I'm like a tongue-tied adolescent when I'm around you. You needn't be, Mr. Pemberton. I won't bite. All right! Enough's enough! <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All set up for you. Step right up here, put your neck in here, kick this, and it's goodbye, cruel world. You want to burn this? I can do that for you. Stop! That's all right. A lot of people are confused. There's only a select minority that know what they really want. Hey, darling. <laughs> but I know what I want suddenly. Miss Bracken. Yes, Mr. Bellwood? I have a confession to make. The rejection of my, my book was not the entire reason for me wanting to end my life. Part of my despair was the thought that I loved you and I could never have you, <laughs> that you just weren't available. <laughs> <coughs> Shut your filthy mouth. <laughs> yes, Mr. Pemberton? <laughs> but now, if we can be together... Be together, Mr. Pemberton? Life is worth living. Wonderfully so. For how long? For the rest of our lives. Oh, dear. I, I was thinking more like half an hour. Miss <laughs> 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 Franken. I can't spend the rest of my life with you, Mr. Pemberton. What would my husband say? <laughs> and the children, they'd be terribly upset. <laughs> What's your, your husband? 
I'm just the entertainment squire. Don't you have any hobbies, Mr. Pemberton? <laughs> <laughs> hobbies? Good God! <laughs> Let's go, Father. Adieu, Mr. Pemberton. Miss Bracken, I'll take the 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pemberton, you clearly have deep feelings for me. What if the taste of my body renews your zest for life? Will you be content to come back to the library as before and stare at your hands? Or having had me once, will you not want me again and again? That's exactly what will happen. And he'll probably start stalking you and what have you. And he'll end up in court or in the papers. And you can kiss goodbye to your job. And your marriage. You keep out of this. No, I'm afraid he's right, Mr. Pemberton. Better we don't start something we can't finish. But I do thank you for your unrequited passion for me. It does make a girl feel better about herself. <laughs> do you believe in an afterlife, Mr. Pemberton? No. I do. I'm a regular at seances. <laughs> it's a nice way to stay in touch with the dear departed. I'll ask after you next time. I'll see how you're doing in your new surroundings. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Pemberton. Thank <laughs> you.